Good morning everyone, it's about 8.20am on a Friday morning in July 2023 and I'm just arriving into St Kilda on Route 96 on board E2 class tram number 6073 and we're just coming into the Route 96 terminus on Ackland Street. It's about seven and a half degrees outside, so pretty chilly. In this video we're going to go on a walk through St Kilda uh, starting from Ackland Street and then heading around the Esplanade up to the old St Kilda station and then up to St Kilda Junction and we'll see a lot of different trams on a lot of different tram routes. Going to be a pretty chilled out walk in real time so grab a drink sit down and uh, enjoy the stroll so here we are at the Ackland Street terminus um, this section of the street was pedestrianized in 2016 uh, it used to be just narrow footpaths and a uh, pretty unpleasant sort of place but they've turned it into this fantastic uh, walkable area with cafes and everything all over the place. Um, it's a huge improvement on how it was before. You might notice there's an illuminated sign here which says Platform 2 which is really unusual. Tram platforms don't normally have numbers in Melbourne and it doesn't really tie in with the rest of the passenger information. So if you come here on a weekend or a nice summer afternoon you'll find it'll be a very bustling place with people everywhere um, but uh, it's actually very quiet at this time of morning and it is a Friday which is one of the days that people are more likely to work from home and that might be uh, quite a popular choice with the St Kilda demographic so um, yeah I was actually surprisingly deserted at this hour of the day. See that second B-class there has got its lights on ready to depart. This bit here they did retain one lane of traffic down the street which is a bit unfortunate in my opinion catering for a very small number of cars which sort of uh, makes this part of the street a lot less usable than uh, the other part to the east but um, still a big improvement on how it used to be though and let's face it there aren't many suburban roads in Melbourne where you could safely walk down the middle of them at 8.20am on a weekday like this And of course this is Route 96 which is the same route that travels down Melbourne's other famous pedestrianised strip on Burke Street in the city.
lots of uh, suspicious massage parlors here in St Kilda. We just get our first glimpse of the scenic railway roller coaster over there in the distance, which we'll have a slightly closer look at shortly. That dude is wearing shorts despite the temperature. And just coming in on the left here, we see a D1 class tram on outbound on Route 16 in a advertising color scheme. The line that heads off to my right there goes down Carlisle Street, and um, that's routes uh, 3A and uh, 16. That large building straight ahead that's catching the sunlight is the Palais Theatre, which is a very large theatre built in the 1920s. And here's another D1 coming on Route 16 heading for the city. And another A-Class on the 96. And there is Luna Park, one of the most iconic views in Melbourne. Um, the Scenic Railway, which is the, I think it's called the Great Scenic Railway actually, is the wooden roller coaster which goes up over the entrance there. It's the world's second oldest operating roller coaster built in 1912. That part on the right there is the, uh, the lift hill. So the first part of the ride you come up there and then you go through the top of the, the entrance. So we're now walking up uh, this road on the right, it's called the Esplanade and uh, as you can see it becomes slightly elevated here and you can just catch your first glimpses of Port Phillip Bay over to the left there. Let's view back towards Luna Park and the Palais. Definitely not a huge amount going on here at this time of morning, but um, quite nice with that winter sunlight coming in, catching the top of the trees there.
can see those markings on the ground there. Um, this is where they have the St Kilda market and uh, that marks out where the, uh, where the stalls go. By the way, this video sort of goes hand in hand with uh, another one that I've made explaining um, where all the tram routes go through St Kilda and talking about how St Kilda is a very unusually tram dense suburb. Um, so make sure you check that one out after this. Unless you've just watched that and that's why you've come to this one, then don't go back and check that out because then you'll be in like an infinite loop and you might never escape. There's actually this very busy road tucked away just down there called Jacker Boulevard, which handles most of the through road traffic through St Kilda. Um, it's um, not a very nice road, but at least it's sort of more or less tucked out the way. But it does kind of divide the suburb up a bit from the, the beachfront. Um, we arrived on heading back to the city. Just going to take a slight detour up here, have a bit of a better look over towards the beach and that enormous road. drugs kids
like to take a moment to point out how good the uh, dynamic range is on this camera, which is a, a GoPro 10. Uh, on my old GoPro, which was a 7, you would have either had the sky completely white or the ground completely black. There wouldn't have been much in between, uh, but this one balances it out really well. So we're now turning into Fitzroy Street, which is where a lot of the bars and clubs are. It's quite cool here how there's those palm trees in between the tram line and the road lanes. another A-class on 96 there. And just coming in the distance I can see our first high floor tram. Oh, and there's a, another D-Class on Route 16 coming up behind the E. Oh uh, yeah, first high floor tram, Z3-Class outbound on Route 16. Route 16 is about half Zs and half Ds, so um, basically makes it half low floor trams. So I think they try to alternate them when they can. So if you're somebody that needs a low floor tram for accessibility, hopefully you only have to wait one tram. But obviously in reality it doesn't always work out that way. might notice that street we just crossed is Ackland Street again which we've sort of gone round in a in a big curve on the Esplanade and uh, cut back across it again.
So this here is Park Street, and on the left you'll see an A-Class on Route 12. This is the Route 12 terminus, which is kind of a funny spot for a terminus. It's sort of on the, the outskirts of the, the suburb, but it's in this nice tree-lined street. It's winter at the moment, so uh, no leaves on these deciduous trees, but it's still a nice spot. And you can see there's a single track that leads into Fitzroy Street. Um, which I don't think is used for any regular purpose um, but it does allow trams to be diverted that way or transferred if they need to be. Um, worth noting that it only connects with the city bound track in Fitzroy Street. You can't be heading south on Fitzroy Street and head straight into the terminus here. So Route 12 takes a kind of winding route through the back streets into the city and obviously uses lower capacity trams um, but it does only take about four-ish minutes longer to get to Southern Cross that way uh, compared to catching the 96. You can see this is one of the few tram stops in this area which uh, doesn't have platforms and just has the tiny safety barriers separating from road traffic and obviously this stop isn't used very much. In fact that tram just went flying straight through. Uh, outside the city centre Melbourne trams only stop on request so that's not uncommon. see there's two red T lights there because there's a junction ahead where the Route 96 is going to turn left. This guy's got a pretty impressive family bike setup. So this large flat building you can see on the left just coming up here is the former St Kilda railway station. Uh, St Kilda had a uh, suburban railway line from I think 1857 till 1987 when it was converted to a tram line uh, which is now the Route 96. Um, so that's the building there, the track was over on the right hand side. And oh, here comes a... 96 tram, we're just going to turn left into uh, the former railway yard um, and the tram stop here is still called St Kilda Station. A 
and then over here might see some suspicious silver strips on the ground. They are of course not real rails but they are a homage to the St Kilda to Brighton tramway which ran off up Grey Street there. Uh, it was a tram line that was actually operated by the Victorian Railways and it was actually 5 foot 3 broad gauge um, like the rest of the Victorian Railway system and the terminus was here so trams terminated on this side of the building and trains were on the other side of the building and it was a connecting railway service. Um, but the tram line closed in 1959 so it's been gone for a pretty long time now. I think there were probably less sunflowers on the roof back then. And then when we come around this corner here we can see the former shelter um, over the platform. This was a very unusual spot that had a proper sheltered roof. It was quite unusual for Victoria. If we look down here, which is unfortunately a private area now, you can see an old next train departure clock hanging from the roof. I have no idea if that is authentic or not. I would love to know if anybody can answer that question. Um, now if we look over here, you can actually see there's the edge of the platform there and that bit that's now a timber deck that was actually where the track was so trains actually came in underneath this roof um, there really wasn't anywhere else on the suburban network like this so this roof provided shelter for trains that were sitting in the platform and also sheltered the platform itself uh, so passengers would have been able to step onto the train on a rainy day without getting wet and then um, there were a couple of sidings here so where the tram stop is now is, is in the former yard. Now something pretty cool up here, and I think this is a really interesting relic. If you look at the far end of the train shed roof, just where that tram is disappearing now, you see that the very last span between the pillars, see that last span is quite a bit wider than all the previous spans. It's got like a steel structure on the top, giving it extra strength to allow it to be wider. That's because when this railway first opened, and it was obviously steam operated, Rather than having a runaround track there, they actually had a transversa where the locomotive would be literally moved sideways on like a laterally moving turntable deck and it would come out from under the roof there and be moved onto the second track. So uh, that's the reason why that span there had to be made extra wide. Surviving PTC logo there. And another Z class heading on the 16 out to Q. That there on the right is a brand new electric bus, that is a battery bus. I haven't had a chance to go on one yet, but they are starting to appear around Melbourne.
we're now getting up towards the sort of northern end of the suburb and uh, this is where sort of the main part of St Kilda ends. So just up here is St Kilda Junction, which is both an enormous road junction uh, between St Kilda Road, uh, Queensway, uh, Fitzroy Street, Punt Road, some others I don't really know about, um, and it's also a tram junction. Um, just off to the right there we have uh, where Route 67 goes, and um, also the th uh, Route 3 goes that way on weekdays. Um, and uh, just a little bit further up uh, we have where the uh, 5 and 64 turn off down Queensway which we'll see that spot shortly. Now we want to get ourselves over to the St Kilda Junction tram stop uh, which is a bit of a challenge as a pedestrian but we are going to go down through this underpass which is uh, highly decorative. I'm assuming that most of this is actually officially sanctioned graffiti, but um, obviously some of it also isn't. Uh, I don't really care much either way in this particular case, it would be pretty ugly if it was all just plain concrete. This blue sign here, which you can only just make out under the graffiti, says St Kilda tram stop, which makes no sense because we're in St Kilda. I think it's probably meant to say St Kilda road tram stop or maybe even St Kilda junction tram stop, but it's clearly not an official PTV sign. There's a giant sugar glider there. So that straight ahead is Queen's Way, where um, routes 5 and 64 dive down underneath there. There aren't many places in Melbourne that look like this, it's quite a bizarre place. There's a 
B2 class there going straight ahead. That would be a uh, Route 67. there is waiting for the lights to go through the junction. And here comes the Z class climbing up the ramp from Queensway. take a quick look up here where we get a bit of a view towards the junction between uh, St Kilda Road and Fitzroy Street. There's a Z class on 16 coming out of Fitzroy Street. that wasn't a standard ambulance, it said mobile stroke unit on the side of it. Alright, so we're going to head over to the actual junction tram stop now. painting of a W class tram there, number 1022, which is orange for some reason, on Route 69, which is an old St Kilda route which doesn't exist anymore. trams in Melbourne are required to stop before facing sets of points to visually identify the position of the points before they proceed. Um, Z class going down Queensway and that's actually on a Route 16 which is being diverted because Route 16 doesn't go that way. and a B class following it on Route 64.
So this is a pretty grim kind of spot. I, I doubt, I don't think it's actually a very busy stop because it's in the middle of all these roads. So it's not actually very close to any like apartments or shops or anything. But um, you can see here there are two signs on that post saying off route hotspot, check your table, which is uh, tramway speak for don't make a wrong turn. You can actually see that painted between the rails it has a little reminder for routes 5 and 64 to go left. A staff member hopping off the tram with the points bar here to manually change these points. Um, most sets of points on the Melbourne tram network can be changed electronically from the cab but sometimes they fail and uh, someone has to get out and change them manually. Some people might see this as a kind of archaic practice but to me this is what's good about the tramways is they're, they're not afraid to keep things moving by using basic solutions. If that was the railways, that'd be it, you know, bus replacements. And this Z class is not picking up passengers, but still making a compulsory stop before the points, more or less. And this Z is on a route five, so it will be taking a left-hand turn here. And I noticed the driver did not get out to change the points back. So obviously they are working when changing for the left hand direction but not working changing for the straight. Here's a B class in an advertising call scheme uh, pretending to be a suitcase. And this is a route 67, so driver manually changing the points to the right again. Well, this has been fun, but I have to actually go to work now, so uh, I'm going to get off this Z class and go back to the city. Uh, Z3 class number 172. <laughs> Thank you.
If you haven't checked it out, please take a look at my explainer on tram routes through St Kilda. Hope you enjoyed the walk and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.